Hello and welcome to my channel if you're new here and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. I am Azrain, your friendly blue mage, you can call me Azo. And we're just going to get right into today's topic which is a fiercely uh, debated and divisive topic. And before I start I just want to say please don't be mean to me or I will cry. Uh, nobody wants that. So uh, if you've been living under a rock for the past few days uh, at the time of recording, let me just summarize this video. What we're going to be going over is the four banned cards uh, that were banned by the rules committee the other day, uh, depending on when you're actually watching this video. Uh, they have casual players, competitive players, and collectors up in arms. The four cards in question are Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, Dockside Extortionist, and Nadu, which honestly... Uh, last one is not really a huge surprise. But first and foremost, uh, I want to promote a healthy discussion and a debate surrounding these banned cards. So please uh, comment your thoughts down below as I want to hear all opinions, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree. So specifically, your opinion, go ahead, go down to the comments and please leave one. Uh, but I will say that harassment, insults, threats, they're, those are just stupid. Uh, like I get that you're fired up, I get that you may disagree with the bannings, I get that your collection, you may have lost pieces in your collection throughout your decks, uh, you know, and that's certainly something to be upset about, but attacking other people in the community is certainly not the answer. So please don't do that, uh, but go ahead and leave your comment down below. So I just want to start by summarizing how Wizards of the Coast, uh, the Commander Advisory Group, and the Rules Committee work together to get the results that we've seen. Uh, in the banning in these past couple days and in my opinion it's it just seems that there's no possible way that these three branches uh, didn't somehow work together or communicate at all and you know for Wizards of the Coast to just maximize profits on these cards and, and then it's just like they knew that they would be banned down the road I, I personally fail to see how there was no communication between these three groups and from a very basic understanding, uh, from what I know, Wizards of the Coast, it's like they want to push cardboard out, they want to make sales, they want to make profits, but Wizards of the Coast does not run or control, they don't sell on the secondary market. Uh, you, you know, so like they just push out sealed products, like they're not selling singles. So they want to entice new and old players uh, to buy their product by creating and printing chase cards that people are going to flock to stores to buy, you know, to buy that sealed product because that's how Wizards of the Coast is going to make their money. You know, Wizards doesn't say, you know, here, buy Mana Crypt on our website. That's something that a secondary market, a secondary seller does. Uh, so the Rules Committee specifically deals with health and rules of cards within the game of Commander and the Commander Advisory Group, to my understanding, uh, they're kind of like the voice for players, like, you know, popular players. Uh, to give their opinions, to share thoughts on the game, and for Wizards of the Coast and the Rules Committee uh, to take into consideration. So the the advisory group is kind of like our voice, you know, with like important figureheads. The Rules Committee actually does things with bannings and rules changes, and then Wizards of the Coast is just the person providing the platform, giving the cards, making the product. So, you know, a lot of people I think have been assuming that like Wizards of the Coast is like whispering in the rules committee's ears you know like ban this don't ban this we want to sell some mana crypts so you know hold off on that banning even though like you want to ban it give it a year you know dockside give it four or five years and then ban it after we've reprinted it twice and and given a full art extended art edition so people chase that and then ban it you know like i i really don't think that that's what's happening but i've seen a lot of opinions saying that that is what happens uh, so there is a document that uh, will be linked below that the rules committee published so at the time of recording they published it last night so that's going to be down below go ahead i strongly encourage you to read that or skim through it whatever you want to digest it but it it definitely uh, addresses some of the burning questions surrounding the ban so please take time and just do that as it may answer some questions that you might be commenting right now moving beyond wizards of the coast selling points we need to look at these cards within the format itself now, I'm of the opinion that these cards needed to be banned. Uh, you know, I play on stream, I play at my local game store, I play casually with my friends on the side, and whenever any of these banned cards were introduced into the game, they it felt like they shifted the win rate so heavily, and it honestly, the overall fun levels 
just went down dramatically when any of these cards came out. So it's purely my opinion, but someone, uh, the one card that I've owned of the three was Dockside Extortionist. And if I had it in my hand, I knew I could just, I could play it, bounce it, flicker it, clone it, reanimate it. Uh, you know, even from my opponents reanimating an opponent's Dockside uh, or anything like that was just crazy. Um, you know, Dockside could just win you the game on the spot. And it has the potential to just create so much mana that can just break your turns and allow you to effectively win the game on the spot the second that it comes out with a two mana card is is crazy. And honestly, I've never seen a Dockside resolve that didn't just swing the game to that player's favor. You know, Dockside, it's two mana. It's incredibly easy to manipulate to an absurd level and give you just a crazy amount of treasures. And like, if you're playing Dockside at the right time, you should have no problem just resolving it and then like having your way to win right there. And it's it's two mana, which is just crazy. Uh, the next card, Mana Crypt. Uh, you know, Mana Crypt is tough because I've seen a lot of comparisons lately after the banning. Like, what about Soul Ring? What about Ancient Tomb? Uh, what about all the Mox cards? And, uh, you know, I just want to take a second to, like, address that as well. So, in my opinion, Soul Ring's fine. Soul Ring is a dollar. Uh, you have to pay one mana. You get two. So, the turn you play it, you get technically one mana. Um, you know, it's cheap, it's affordable, everybody could run it, it should be in every deck, it's printed in every precon since the beginning of Commander Precons, so, you know, it's it's super cheap, there's no reason that you shouldn't own a Soul Ring. Um, Mana Crypt was $250 at the time of banning, and it's zero mana, which is different than one, obviously, so it's got no cost to the user the turn that it comes out, making it just purely better, and, um, Ancient Tomb, it's a land that damages you every time it taps, uh, and it's not just a 50-50 on your upkeep, you know, once per turn, it's every time you tap. So if you have a way to untap Ancient Tomb and use it again, you're still going to take two. Whereas Mana Crypt, you can tap it and untap it infinitely, and then it's a 50-50 shot at your upkeep. And the Moxes, uh, usually with the Mox cards, you have to play the Mox, exile a card in your hand of the corresponding color or type or whatever the Mox wants you to do. So you're losing a card in your hand, you're, so you're playing a card, you're exiling a card from your hand, then you can tap for one mana. So you're losing effectively two cards to get one mana. Yes, it's strong because it's zero, but at the same time, it's, you know, it, it's one mana. And you have to go down a card in your hand, which is like the most important part. So like, honestly, I just, I don't think any of the cards that I mentioned are on the same level as having a card that's zero mana, taps for two colorless, damages you 50-50 on your upkeep, you know, Mana Crypt is just very fast. And honestly, I'm not going to talk about Nadu. You can come to your own conclusions on him. Honestly, you know, there's reasons that he was banned. Should he have been banned? Should he not have been banned? I never played with him. I never played against a Nadu. That's up for you to decide. I think that he's absurdly strong, but I've never really had to face one. I've never had anyone say like, Oh my god, I need to build Nadu, he's so cool. It's just kind of like everybody understood that he was strong, so everybody kind of stayed away from him as a commander. And lastly, we're going to move on to the most divisive, in my opinion, which would be Jeweled Lotus. Now, I think Jeweled Lotus was outright just a design mistake. This card should never have been printed. It was pushed. It was a pushed card. It was meant to sell product. Black Lotus, which is the most expensive broken card ever to exist, was basically reprinted with a tagline that says use this mana only to cast your commander it's a card that was pushed and it was designed specifically for commander and i refuse to believe that wizards of the coast could not see how powerful broken and problematic printing a zero cost three colored mana return card would be for this format it belongs in every single deck and it makes decks with higher costed commanders able to push out their commander way faster than they should be. There's a reason that cards are more expensive because they're stronger. So when you're able to effectively erase three turns off the clock, it makes that commander absurdly better. You know, now you can play your four mana commander on turn one with one land, Jeweled Lotus, there's your commander. And you can get out your six mana commander on turns two, three, four, depending on the other cards, the other lands and rocks in your hand. 
Um, you know, I've, and I've never attempted to own a jeweled lotus because when I saw it for the first time, I, I just knew that it was going to be broken and unfun and potentially cause problems down the line. I never really foresaw a, a ban because it was like printed specifically for Commander, but like I just read that and it was like, I don't even want to include this in my decks. It's a feel bad card. You have it on turn one. You, you play it against someone and it's going to be some instant feel bads. It's just so strong. So honestly, I, I think that there is no excuse for printing a card like Jeweled Lotus. And I genuinely am sorry for anyone who bought this card thinking that it wouldn't break the format uh, and just wouldn't cause issues because <laughs> zero costed mana rocks, colored mana, pushed card, reprinted special art is like, come on, like you, you got to look at that and think like, oh yeah, you know, that's going to be so affordable. Everybody's going to have a Jeweled Lotus in every single deck is like, that's just not the case. Now moving on, so the price of the three band cards made it so that way new players and casual players couldn't break into the barrier of owning those cards. And it's easy for veteran players or people who spend, who like to spend their money on Magic to say, you know, well, just, just buy a copy. It's not broken if everybody owns it. Well, yeah, but don't you see how that statement pretty much is the issue? Every deck needs a Mana Crypt. Every deck needs a Jeweled Lotus and a Dockside Extortionist. And like, wouldn't you say that is an issue if every single deck needs these cards? You know, there are people out there who have entire decks worth the amount of a one Mana Crypt, and they don't have the resources to keep up with the spikes who jam Mana Crypt in every single deck, you know, but they can afford a $1 Soul Ring. So when you say Soul Ring's broken and needs to be banned, Soul Ring is a good, cheap, effective mana, mana rock that just gets you in the door. $250 Mana Crypt, like so price and scarcity made these cards unplayable for the average commander player and when competing against someone who would run these cards there's an extreme disadvantage for someone who doesn't own them versus someone who loves them and puts them in every single deck so this may lead you to think about the difference between casual and competitive commander so in, in my opinion you know there's there's little cedh and then big cedh big cedh is casual EDH, little CDH is, you know, competitive. That CDH is what we refer to it as. And something that's come across my timeline is, you know, if, if these cards are such an issue, why don't we split Commander into two formats? We have casual kitchen table, that's where the Timmies go, EDH, go have fun with your friends. And then you have competitive, try hard, super chad Commander, where everyone's trying to win as fast as possible. And it's certainly an option, and I don't think it's the answer, however. Do we have two formats for modern, vintage or standard? Do we have a, you know, here's the, the casual modern decks where it's $100 or less and then over there we have the super high roller, you know, $1,000 plus tables. Like no, we have one format with one ban list. Commander has a much more extensive card list than any of the other formats and I could see this being a route that gets pushed but I just don't think that it fixes the issues of banning cards that are effectively broken in game warping just because people like them because they're strong and the next thing that you might be asking yourself in your playgroup is well i don't agree with these bans can we just rule zero these cards and play as though they're not banned and while that's something that for you and your group to discuss and figure out if you play with me i'm gonna say no you know these cards they're banned for a reason either we follow the ban list or we don't ban any cards at all so don't be surprised if you want to play Dockside, you want to play your Jeweled Lotus, I'm going to roll up with Emrakul the Aeon's Torn and show you why these cards are banned. Rules are around for a reason, and if we don't follow them, why would we follow any rules at all? Rules are around to give games structure and make sure everyone is playing at the same level. So in my opinion, if something is banned, those are the rules. Following the rules is going to make the game more fun for everybody rather than having the one guy that shows up who's salty about his Dockside being banned and he says, well, I want to play Dockside. Okay, well, then I'm going to play Channel Emrakul. You know, like, like that's just what's going to happen. And one last thing that keeps popping up uh, is now that people's beloved rocks and Docksides have been hit, you know, what's the next problem that the rules committee is going to take care of? And the two cards that I keep seeing brought up is Smothering Tithe and Ristic Study. You know, what about these broken cards? Will they draw cards? Will they make treasures? You know, they introduce stacks into the game. And Smothering Tithe, yeah, it sucks, but it's a slow burn. It's annoying. It takes time to rack up treasures. 
And for both Smothering Tide and Rhystic Study, you have the option as the player to negate those effects. You can pay two mana and stop someone from making a treasure. You can pay one mana and stop someone from drawing a card. Yeah, it takes up your resources, but at least you actually have the option to deny someone from drawing a card or making a treasure. You can also destroy the enchantments, and then your problem is solved. But with Dockside, it comes out instantly, makes 30 treasures, and there's nothing you can do about it. So the only solution to play against Dockside is that you need to play blue, you need to put a bunch of counter spells in your deck, and you need to sit and wait and hold up counter magic, because if they play Dockside, the game is over. Everyone at the table, you have to play blue, and you have to hold up counter magic. That's just, that is an absurd solution to, you know, well, we need to keep Dockside, okay, then everyone has to play blue, I guess. And so what does this mean moving forward? So what does this mean for the future of our cardboard? Why should we buy collector's packs or sealed products or singles on the secondary market when any good, well-performing card is just going to be banned at any moment? And to be honest, that is something that scares me too. I agree that these bannings were a good thing, but that doesn't mean that I don't look to the future and see where other cards that could be banned out from under me. You know, quick example is something like Cyclonic Rift. It's a super amazing card that single-handedly wins games. It hurts all of your opponents and not you. It's instant speeds, great value. And I, I have a couple copies. I, I definitely do. And what's stopping Wizards of the Coast from reprinting Cyclonic Rift, giving it more special treatments, more foils, more alternate arts? And then the rules committee gets together and just says, yeah, Cyclonic Rift, it, it wins games on its own. It's played in 90% of blue decks. It needs to go. We're banning it effective immediately. I'm sure that I would just be, I would be as unhappy and upset as people are who have lost you know, their collections, their Jeweled Lotus, their Mana Crypt, their Dockside. I personally think Wizards of the Coast and the Rules Committee, they need to have some way where they can communicate with the whole player base and they need to find a way to avoid the absolute firestorm of what happened to them. Um, with cards moving forward. I don't really have a perfect solution right now as Commander is just such a wide format. There's so much going on. There's so much to take in and and digest with all the players. And like, how do you make everybody happy is like, I don't know. But in again, in my opinion, I agree with these bannings. I think that it's going to make for healthier games moving forward. I don't see these cards all the time. I understand if you're upset by it. I understand that your collection has been hit. And I sympathize with you, but I do think that this was the right decision, banning these cards. And that's just my opinion. So whether or not you agreed or disagreed with me, please leave a comment down below on your thoughts on the banned cards and the future of our beloved Commander format. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Join my Discord if you want to continue this conversation and keep it going with me live in real time over in Discord. A link should be in the description. And as always, I am Azrain, your friendly Blue Mage. I will see you in the next one. And thank you for watching.